Hi everyone, this is the missing Mic Make Mail number 28. Uh, we've got quite a number of things to get through, so let's get into it. Now, I was originally going to publish this video on Star Wars Day, but unfortunately I had a fair amount of contract work this week. Shame really, because I had lined up a really expensive JLPCB advert. So Lord Vader, yes, may the force be with you. What, do you have some sort of lisp or something? Mick, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Okay, maybe I just need to do something else. Hi, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB makes some pretty decent PCBs. From simple two layer boards, all the way up to multi-layer boards supporting BGAs. So if you're looking to produce some professional, high quality PCBs with a fast turnaround time, then check them out. Of course, you can still order 10 PCBs for only $2, with a $20 shipping discount on your first order. That's a pretty insane price. All right, so uh, let's get all this big stuff out of the way. So the first one uh, was sent by a patron of mine, Tony. He said he'll send me a couple of goodies. Is this an Intel Core i7? Oh, nice. So he's uh, sent me a whole bunch of uh, SSD, uh, M2 key SSDs. It looks like they're all 32 uh, gig uh, uh, M2s, which is really nice. Actually, this is absolutely fantastic. I've got a number of uh, comparison videos I wanna do um, on SSDs. I'll really be able to um, run a whole lot of tests on uh, SBCs with uh, M2 key slots. Thanks for that, uh, Tony. Um, I'll certainly put these to good use, fantastic. Okay, so the next one, uh, I'm not sure where this came from, but I'm sure I'll find out in a minute. Nerdonic. So uh, Hayden contacted me, um, I think it was back in October last year, uh, to send me the uh, Atom uh, X1, which was a Kickstarter uh, campaign. Unfortunately, he had to change the name, or what they call it, an Exxon Mini now. So the Exxon Mini is uh, based on the Sam D21. Uh, there's a lot of boards around uh, with using the SAMD21, uh, even my Super Duper. Of course, there's not many GPIOs pushed out. There's only pushed out eight of them. So if you look at the data sheet, there's a number of GPIOs that are pushed out. PA22 and 23 are pushed out to CIRCOM 3 and 5. And we've got PB8 and 9, which is pushed out to CIRCOM 4. And then 4 and 5 and 10 and 11 are pushed down to CIRCOM 0. So that means um, if you don't know about the SAMD21, it has up to six CIRCOM ports, which can be configured either as SPI, ITC, UART, and a whole bunch of other things as well, RS485. So I like to fire it up and see how it goes, but I know I've got another package that's delivered, which will help me greatly. So let's put this aside, open the next one, uh, and see what we get. This is a final box. The reason for this is I needed to upgrade my old Weller soldering iron. The one I have, I've had for about 30 years. That served me well. So I decided to upgrade to another Weller. Uh, this one is a WD-1000. It's a pretty decent model. I could have bought a Hakko uh, FD-888, but I thought, uh, I'll try out this Weller and see how it goes. It's a fairly old model, it's not something that's a recent thing. So it's certainly going to be a whole lot better than my old soldering iron, which is a, an old, I don't know what it is, a WTCP series iron. Uh, and look, the tip is really not suitable for doing SMD work. Mind you, the tip on this isn't really suitable, but you can get smaller tips for it. Hopefully, I also have a, an SMD tip in here. A decent tip besides the big one I've been given. Oh, okay. I ordered two other things, which was a decent pair of tweezers. They're Duratool ones. They're not the top of the range ones, but they're pretty decent. And the ones I had before, which are cheap. I think these are Jayco ones. They're all right, but they're not, not so crash hot. Uh, and the second thing I got 
there's two pocket beagles. So if you remember back in one of the Mick Make Mail segments, I had ordered two Texas Instruments DLP 2000 projectors, which were designed to attach to a beagle bone. So these are pocket beagles, which I intend to attach to those projectors and get them going. Unfortunately, the footprint's slightly wrong, so I'll have to make up a little cable to attach to it. So that's what I've got planned for that. And also, I need to do a review on them, because I haven't done a review on the the, the beagle bones at all. So let's fire up this weller and test out the Exxon Sam D21 board. So I could have bought one of the really nice soldering irons that actually have a little switch that turns on and off the iron. The really expensive ones are fantastic. By the time you pull it from the cradle and start working on the job, it'll be up to temperature. Uh, but this is pretty good, this is up to temperature already and that took what, six seconds or something, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, I've got a really chunky tip, that's the default tip. Let's give it a crack and see if I can use it. So for new irons, you just got to make sure you tin the tip. <laughs> this is such a chunky tip. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to go soldering. Not bad for using a chunky tip. Uh, so let's plug in the Exxon Mini and see how it flies. So the Nerdonic website has some pretty easy docs to follow. The most important bit is installing the SAMD board support within the Arduino IDE. When you plug it in, it comes up as an Arduino Zero. And it was all pretty smooth sailing, but when I uploaded one of the examples to the board, it threw an error. So for some reason I can never get this Exxon going. I tried the same thing under Windows, but no dice. Same thing under Linux. It's pretty odd because my super duper board is recognised every time. So I suspect it may be some dodgy bootloader. Or maybe the firmware was balked during the initial program. So I even tried a USB hub uh, because there have been some issues with USB devices on Linux if they draw too much current. Look, my super duper board when I plugged it in it was recognised and came up straight away so for some reason this I just couldn't get this programmed at all. This does happen from time to time uh, that some things I just don't get going and it's due to the fact that I don't have very much time to spend investigating these things but I'll contact the Nerdonic guys and see uh, what the issue is. So anyway let's move on. Let's try uh, cracking open one of these bigger ones and also my little projector. These are really nice, these little boards. So this is the little mini projector I got. It's designed to actually go into a proper beagle bone, but um, I can probably cobble something together, I reckon. So it's pretty easy to follow the instructions for setting up the beagle bone. I'm sure you've seen it all before. Just burn an SD card, chuck it into the beagle bone, and uh, plug it in. Way to go. So the pocket beagle booted up pretty quickly. If you power it from a PC, then you'll see two interfaces created. One that you can use to SSH into, and another with a website running at the back end. It's actually pretty cool onboarding. I think much better than the Pi. There's also the usual complement of GPIOs, SPI, ITC, everything that all works. For any SPC manufacturer watching this video, and I know there are some, take note of this onboarding experience. This is what it really should be looking like. As easy as plug and play. Not having to delve into documents that are half baked. Nice. So I need to add some headers on first and these headers are just a little bit too big so I need to cut them off. And now I've got a whole lot of soldering to do with my fat tip. Well, I can say uh, certainly soldering the power and ground planes is a whole lot easier with a, a fat tip, but uh, the rest of it's just really hard to do. But that's pretty good. Alright, I need to connect everything up now. 
Okay, so it turns out uh, I can't actually use the pocket beagle with the DLP2000 uh, because it doesn't push out the LCD signals, which is a bit of a bugger. And the only other beagle bone I have is um, the beagle bone original, which is based on uh, the pocket, well, rather the pocket beagle is based on the original beagle bone. So um, let's try a pie. So I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi instead. Uh, so I spent some time uh, wiring it all up and let's power it on and see how it goes. So I have to uh, dim the lights in the uh, studio so you can actually see it. And there you go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So I think I need to make it a bit smaller. I think I'll use a uh, Pi Zero for this. So I don't think I really need to show you soldering again. Okay, let's uh, wire it all up. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of noise in the display. This is just simply due to the fact that I'm not having enough ground connections. So you can see it just instantly improves the signal. Nice. And so powering it, I can either power it straight from uh, the USB port of the uh, Pi Zero or uh, back the other way, power it from this. So either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I might actually end up doing is uh, making a simple adapter PCB so you can attach uh, Raspberry Pi 0W to uh, this DLP 2000 and um, that would be really nice. The only issue I have with this is the uh, focus is is really a bit pathetic um, but apart from that this is a nice little unit. Well, he's making me do this stupid thing over and over again. I don't, I can't do it.